You ever feel like you're just in it, doing what you need to do to get the job done? You have your head down, you're laser focused, and you're just checking all the boxes on the way to completion. Some years ago, it feels like forever now. I was working as an auditor. I love the work. I love the behind the scenes analytics, the thrill of it. The audit team was working hard and getting things done. So much progress in the draft report just ahead of us. Here come the deadlines. The team heads our meeting with management about the scope, the methodology, the findings and recommendations that we intended to include in the upcoming draft report. Suddenly, ideas are thrown around and we leave the meeting. What just happened? Suddenly, I am overwhelmed by all the new potential work that needs to be done to address what I perceive as a new angle. Our team huddles for a quick meeting about what we need to do and how long it's going to take. My conclusion? It just can't be done. I go back to my manager. I'm sorry. I dig my heels in hard to stay the old course. Lots of frustration later on both sides, I'm sure. And we come to an agreement. The team gets back to work and everything gets done. Yet, there was this feeling that the change was so sudden and I was unprepared for it. Has this ever happened to you? You went from almost done to suddenly you feel like you're just thinking in a pit of quicksand. And now you're in over your head. I can't tell you how many times this has happened to me. Just to realize later, there was a bridge across the chaos right there the whole time. That bridge that eluded me for so long, my friends, were the skills I needed to lead through change or across change, as it were. My hope today is all of them is that you will invest in change leadership skills for you and everyone at your organization so we can successfully take advantage of that bridge across instead of just sinking in the middle of the chaos. The establishment of a change leadership program can empower people at all levels of the organization to lead, support, and influence change. The key is to make us as oversight professionals better change agents. The scope of the program depends on the staff and organizational needs and the resources you are willing to put forward to make this a priority. But why? Why? Again, because we want to cross the bridge. No sinking for us. The easier path. The path of least resistance. The path that leads to innovation and better outcomes. Our workforces often struggle to fully embrace change and innovation when faced with the constant need for change. I can't emphasize this enough. You can change this, powering employees at all levels of the organization to lead, support, and influence change by giving people the resources and experience needed to understand and embrace change instead of resisting or fearing it. This can be achieved. Oh, but did I fear change? Why do things need to be done differently? The work still gets done the old way. There's not enough time here to discuss all the reasons why we need to change, but I think we can all agree that it's part of life and it isn't going away. We as leaders need to embrace it. Especially in the OIG community, we are so focused on being positive change agents within the government. We assess how well federal entities implement new laws and directives, or how efficiently and effectively they meet the, their stated goals. Yet, our own workforces often struggle to fully embrace change 
and innovation when faced with the constant need for change in our day-to-day -day activities. Naturally, we like comfort, the old way of doing things. We focus so much on specific skills to make us better specialists. For instance, as an auditor, I took yellow book classes, program specific classes like HUD single family and multifamily courses, fraud related courses to look for red flags and computer analytics classes. But most of us do not often stop to think about the softer skills that we need to help support us and our teams in other ways. We don't stop often enough to think about how well we implement the new policies or how we can more efficiently and effective at meeting our goals. We have so many other expectations for quality, timeliness, and impactful reports that the idea of change along the way seems daunting. For me, this made it hard to pivot. One change here makes four changes there. And then the deadlines seem impossible. But why did I dig my heels in so hard and throw up barriers to the upcoming changes? At the time, I didn't know why. I just did it. Changes seemed like they would create chaos in the middle of order. Just too much for me to navigate. This should be a huge, huge red flag. The inflexibility. I eventually found myself applying for and obtaining an internal quality assurance position within my organization. It was not overly different from my previous work, just internal versus external focus. The rules were generally the same. Consistency and rules worked for me. It was comfortable. I liked it. I'm going to go out on a limb and say most of us like comfort. Sometimes that's okay. And certainly there's a time and a place for it. As time went on, I started thinking about where my career path was going to lead. I'm a person that likes to plan ahead. And as I heard before, ultimately, only you are responsible for your development. You are your best advocate. So what was I missing? to be a well-rounded employee. What was clear, I was going to need to evolve, to change who the high role. I started reviewing the Office of Personal Management Senior Executive ECQs, the executive core qualifications. And I conducted a gap analysis of what I might be missing. I looked at it from the lens of what skills I would need that I didn't already possess or what I would not acquire from my current position. What became clear was I needed to make some changes, big ones. I wanted to progress my career long-term and be that well-rounded employee. One of my managers recently pointed out, I audited myself. Folks, once an auditor, always an auditor. However, that does not mean I cannot change how I perceive and do things. My next big step was more research and analysis, I know. <laughs> I am an exciting person that finds this fun. It's things like this that kept me engaged in auditing. My next big step landed me back in college, working on a customized master's in public business administration with an emphasis in leadership and organizational development. I had a big gap to fill with leading change and leading people. Want to guess what one of my classes was in? Yep, change management. I went into this class with the idea that it's just another class I needed to fill a gap. That turned out to be true in so many ways. It was not just something I needed to check a box. It was the missing piece. It was my bridge. It all started to make sense. It clicked. Throughout my experience, I had been resistant to change and just trying to wade through the quicksand. Such wasted energy. I felt like I had no control. I did not have the skills to navigate the changes that worked smoothly. If I'm honest, 
Same with my personal matters. Chapter by chapter, lecture by lecture, it just clicked. I kept thinking, why did no one teach this to me before? Why am I just figuring this out now? If I knew how to ask the right questions, how to seek alignment, and how to just be more fluid, I would have adapted so much better over the years. I was intrigued and I got sucked into this new path of change leadership. So much so that when an opportunity presented itself, I jumped to the opportunity to change. I am no longer an auditor. I am now a co-lead of our OIG's change leadership program. I found that I continually learn more skills to help me and others navigate this tricky path of change. Now I admit, as my supervisor talks about a change, sometimes I have this fight or flight response. But then it's more quickly followed by relief. I've got this. I have the tools I need to navigate this. I now know that it's natural for humans to have this response in the first place and why we do it. But I also know I have the tools and the skills to take ownership of the change. And each day, I'm excited to come to work to help others do the same. So I ask you, what is it worth to you, your team, your organization to build a bridge so everyone can navigate change more smoothly? My story hasn't convinced you. I offer a statistic to support my theory. I know you all like to know what's supporting a claim. The Federal Employee Viewpoint Survey provides indicators of how employees view their organization's ability to change. I will point out just one, so it's not to bore you. About 40% of government-wide staff agree or strongly agree that they believe that the survey will be used to make their agency a better place to work. 40%. This tells me that a few possible things but since the focus here is change leadership, I will focus there. Only 40% of employees agree that based on their input, their view of their organization, that there will be a change as a result. This means they do not feel that management, colleagues, or themselves will lead change as a result of data on how they viewed their workplace. This is huge. Please see this as a red flag and start thinking about change. What has you and your organization stuck in the quicksand? Keep in mind, and I cannot say this enough, change leadership is everybody's responsibility. It is not above your pay grade. And let's move away from, I just work here mentality. If you are here, you're a person that is always thinking about improving yourself and your organization. Own it. This is not just SES and managers. Let's provide the skills and resources needed to empower staff at all levels. Let's take some initiative and develop each person in the organization. Not only will this create greater outcomes for your own organization, but it will help your teams better put themselves in the shoes of their reviewees so that they can understand their challenges better, like those they face when administrating new programs or funding, make better and more realistic recommendations. Now, I would like to leave you with some ideas of how to do this. Get clear on your own organization's relationship with change. Where are you strong? Where are you struggling? Utilize a team to collaboratively build and implement a change leadership program framework that is responsive to your organization's unique needs. This can be done by a dedicated team, a cross-component working group, or a combination. Upskill the entire agency on change leadership through formal and informal training, such as brown bag discussions, real-life practical applications from peers, and a toolkit with templates and resources available anytime. Promote inclusivity and knowledge sharing through a change leadership community of practice. 
focus on collaboration and leading change at all levels to promote diversity that will drive innovation. Change leadership is not just management's job. The five key things. One, understand your organization's relationship with change. Two, collaboratively build a change program. Three, upskill everyone. Four, create a change leadership community of practice. Five, focus on leading change at all levels. You build that bridge so people are not stuck in the quicksand. Given the constant change in our lives, consider what you can do to help you and others navigate change better. Give yourself and others the resources and experience to not resist or fear change. Create the change leadership program. Make the investment in your people so that they can make a better investment in advancing their work and create better organizational outcomes as a result. Dare I say, let's prepare everyone to be open and enthusiastic about change because change is inevitable. Thank you for joining me. Thank you.